Welcome back. We're reading The Sealed Nectar, a Patreon requested book. It's about the biography of the noble prophet, peace be upon him. And we're in a new section called The Makan Period. Okay. I'll just come, maybe leave the lid off the highlighter. It'll dry out, but oh, let's see. The life of Allah's messenger, peace be with him, is divided into two periods after Allah honored him with the prophethood and the message. Each of these periods in of his life were distinguished from the other. Number one, the Makkan period, approximately 13 years. Two, the Madinian period, approximately 10 years. Each period is made up of different levels, each of these levels being specifically distinct from the others. This becomes apparent after a brief investigation into the phases that the invitation to the message passed through during each of the two periods. The Makkan period may be divided into three levels. 1. The phase of secret invitation, which lasted for three years. 2. The phase of public invitation to the people of Mecca, spanning from the beginning of the fourth year of prophethood until he migrated to Medina. 3. The phase of invitation outside of Mecca. From the end of the tenth year of prophethood through the Medinian period until the end of the prophet's life, the period of the Medinian phase is discussed in its appropriate place. Okay, now the next part says, Life in Mecca, in the shade of the message and prophethood. This is on page 124. In the cave of Hira. Remember we read the uh, cave in the Quran. So we're going to learn more about that now. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be with him, was nearly 40, he had been accustomed to pass long hours in retirement, meditating and speculating over all aspects of creation around him. That's good. This meditative temperament helped to widen the mental gap between him and his compatriots. You can tell a difference between those who spend time thinking and those who don't, for sure, for sure. He used to provide himself with sawik barley porridge oh, yeah, and water and then directly head for the hills and ravines in the neighborhood of Mecca. One of these in particular was his favorite resort, a cave named Hira. In the Mount of Anur, it was only two miles from Mecca, a small cave, four arms length long, one. Uh, four arms length long by 1.75 arms length wide. He would always go there and feed any poor people who came to him. He used to devote most of his time and the Ramadan in particular to worship and meditation on the universe around him. That's nice. I like doing that. His heart was restless about the moral evils and idolatry that were widespread among his people. He was as yet helpless because no definite course or specific approach had been available for him to follow and clear away the ill practice existing around. This seclusion attended with this sort of reflective approach must be understood in its divine perspective. Yes, the Quakers had a very similar approach to that, withdrawal and contemplation. It's really needed, it really is helps clear the mind. It was a preliminary stage to the period of grave responsibilities that he was to shoulder very soon. Privacy and separation from the impurities of life were two indispensable prerequisites for him to meet with Allah had in store for him. Privacy and separation from the impurities of life. Yes, yes, that is very apparent that that's needed. Prepare him to carry... Oh, oh, I see. I thought that was a period and it was a comma. Okay. What Allah had in store for him, preparing him to carry the great trust, to change the face of the earth, and alter the course of history. It was a rich period of privacy which lasted for three years prior to the beginning of his mission, entering in a new era of lasting contact with the unseen that Allah would permit him to witness. Oh, here we go. We're getting into this, this awesome stuff. Okay, look, it says Jibril, I think peace be upon him symbol, brings down the revelation. 
when he was 40, the peak of one's life. Oh, you know, that's cool that it says the peak of one life because in American culture, a lot of people think the peak of your life is when you're 21. Seriously, some people think that. When he was 40, the peaks of one's life, and they say it is the age when prophets were always ordered to disclose their message. Oh, 40, the age when prophets oh, were always ordered. Signs of his prophethood started to appear and twinkle on the horizon of life. Including among these signs were that the stones in Mecca would greet him with salam. He would not have a dream except that it would become reality as clear as dawn. This lasted for six months. The period of prophethood was 23 years. So this six month period full of true visions constituted an integral part of the 46 parts of prophethood. In Ramadan, in his third year of solitude in the cave of Hira, Allah's will desired his mercy to flow on the earth, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, was honored with prophethood, and the light of revelation burst upon him with some verses of the Noble Quran. As for the exact date, careful investigation into circumstantial and relevant evidence allows us to fix it to Monday the 21st, Ramadan at night, i.e. August 10th, 610 CE, with Prophet Muhammad, peace be with him, exactly 40 lunar years, 6 months and 12 days of age, i.e. 39 Gregorian years, 3 months and 22 days. Oh, okay, I think, okay, this is a really long footnote underneath that, so that means I have to turn the page. Okay, Aisha, peace be with him symbol, gave the following narration of that most significant event that brought the divine light which would drive out the darkness of disbelief and error ignorance. It led life down a new course and brought about the most serious amendment to the line of history of mankind. The first of the initiation of revelation, revelation for Allah's messenger, peace be with him, assumed the form of true dreams that would strikingly come true all the time. After that, seclusion became dear to him and he would go to the cave, Hira, to engage in Tahnuth, devotion. There for a certain number of nights before returning to his family, and then he would return for provisions for a similar stay. At length, unexpectedly, the truth came to him while in the cave. The angel came to him and said, Recite. I cannot recite, he, Muhammad, peace be with him, said. The prophet, peace be with him, described. Then he took me and embraced me tightly, and then let me go and repeated the order, Recite. I cannot recite, said I, and once again he squeezed me and let go, and let go me until I was exhausted. Then he said, Recite. I said, I cannot recite. He squeezed me for a third time and then let me go and said, Read, in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists, has created man from a clot, a piece of thick, coagulated blood, read, and your Lord is the most generous. 96, 1 through 3. The prophet, peace be with him, repeated these verses. He was trembling with fear. At this stage, he came back to his wife, Khadija, Khadija, she was the businesswoman, I remember, and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him until he restored security. He informed Khadija of the incident of the cave and added that he was frightened. I'd be scared too. His wife tried to soothe him and reassure him, saying, Allah will never disgrace you. You unite uterine relations. You bear the burden of the weak. You help the poor and the needy. You entertain the guests and endure hardships in the path of truthfulness. She set out with the Prophet, peace be with him, to her cousin Warak bin Naufal bin Asad bin Abdul Uzza, who had embraced Christianity in the pre-Islamic period, and used to write the Hebrew scriptures. And he would write from the Injil in Hebrew what Allah willed for him to write. He was an old blind man. Khadija, peace be with her, said, 
my cousin, listen to your nephew. Barak said, O oh my nephew, what did you see? Allah's messenger, peace be with him, told him what happened to him. Barak replied, This is Namas, i.e. the angel who is entrusted with divine secrets that Allah sent to Moses. I wish I were younger. I wish I could live up to the time when your people would turn you out. Muhammad, peace be with him, asked, Will they drive me out? Waraka answered in the affirmative and said, Anyone who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility. And if I should be alive till that day, then I would support you strongly. A few days later, Waraka died and the revelation also subsided. Now the next part's in bold. It says, Interruption of Revelation. We'll learn a lot, family. Ibn Sa'ad reported on the authority of Ibn Abbas that the revelation paused for a few days. After careful study, this seems to be the most possible to say that it lasted for three or two and a half years, as is popular, is not correct. But here there is no room to go into more details. Meanwhile, the Prophet, peace be with him, was caught in a sort of depression coupled with astonishment and confusion. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that kind of mental... A lot of us assume we're just going to see a being that's going to touch us, that's from a different dimension, one we don't understand, and we're going to be like, yay! No, like, that's a shattering, like, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, psychologically, you don't know if you've gone crazy or not. You don't know if you're in trouble. You don't know if you can do what it is you're being asked to do. It's very serious business. Blessed business. But it's not a joke. So I can see why he'd be like, what's going on? In a good way and in a tough way, right? In the Book of Dreams, Al-Bukhari recorded that the divine inspiration paused for a while. And the Prophet, peace be with him, became so sad, as we have heard, that he intended several times to throw himself from the tops of high mountains. Suicide. Wow. That's a very interesting thing. That's, that's really amazing. This person, this, you know, Muhammad, it sounds so strong. His kids had died. He was an orphan, right? He, the people who were in charge of taking care of him died. Wow. And then he struggles with mental illness. Not mental illness as in schizophrenic. Mental illness means like when you suffer. Now it means like with some uh, visits of depression. It can be mean a lot of things. But I'm meaning in the good way. Because I've felt like that before. And I know a lot of people who have. I mean, that's a really cool thing. I've never heard that before. No one ever mentioned that. You see, this is amazing because he said, says right here he became sad. And because of this, he might have thought he did something wrong or didn't deserve the revelations anymore. And that he had had thoughts of like dark thoughts of just jumping off. Kind of like how people want to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Sometimes you just want to end it all and you contemplate that and those thoughts come to you. That's very humbling. Very humbling. Wow. You see, people try to just paint him as a warlord. They don't bring this up. You see, that's why it's good to read things for yourself and not just hear what bimbos say on the internet. We'll pause here and then we'll continue.